Hello, my beautiful PhD friends. So, have you always wanted to make your PhD go more efficiently? Do you feel anxious? Well, it all comes down to the perfect schedule and habits, and this video will help you. This video today is brought to you by my newsletter. Um, I've launched a newsletter which has tons of exclusive content about academia, about productivity, about looking after your mental health. It's the stuff I'm reading, the podcasts I'm listening to, the deals that I'm able to get for you guys. It's all exclusive content. Also invitations to invite only Q&A sessions that I'll be holding. So a load of things that you can only get by getting access to the newsletter. So go to andrewstapleton.com.au slash newsletter. I'll put the link in the description below, but uh, get access there and get all of the secret content. I've said it time and time again, a PhD is a marathon and not a sprint. So that means that by setting up your day in a certain structured way and executing it religiously, day in, day out, you will get to your end goal, which is a PhD. And so um, what I've done is I've looked at a, the kind of daily schedule that I think the perfect sort of uh, PhD student would follow. Now, you don't have to do all of these, right? So don't become overwhelmed by saying, I have to follow this exactly, otherwise, it won't work at all. That's not the way this works. Um, executing things, you know, only partly means that that part of your day is gonna be much better and more efficient. So yes, take and pick and choose the things that you want from this schedule. Um, and also, yeah, just don't feel overwhelmed, you know. Your PhD journey is yours and it's your challenge to overcome. So uh, follow this the best you can, but uh, pick and choose to make sure that it fits with your goals and what your daily schedule looks like. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna start before you even get into the lab or your office, I'm gonna start in the morning when you wake up. In all of the books that I've read, there is no doubt that the common theme is success and productivity and good routines and good habits start from the moment you wake up. So I really think for a good, awesome PhD kind of schedule, the day starts, the momentum starts from the moment you wake up. Now, it can be as simple as making your bed every morning. Like, I know in the military and that sort of stuff, they, they really encourage this kind of execution. So the moment you wake up, the first thing you do is set your habits in motion by making your bed. Now, I'm not a huge uh, bed maker, but on the days that I do do it, I just think, yeah, this is like, this is the good thing to do. It sets my mind off on the right path. Um, I have been a fan of exercise for the last year, right? During my PhD, I did no exercise, but I have been running um, three times a week between five kilometers and about 15 kilometers in the mornings. And uh, it has been a, I guess an eye opener for the power of exercise on mental health, on the benefits of sort of like just feeling better, um, being more clear, uh, having the endorphin rush. Like one of my friends said, having a run is like taking a, um, a antidepressant. So uh, I did, I started running and I remember one day I was sat there and I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And I texted him, I was like, I feel amazing. So I really feel like getting exercise into your morning routine will help. No matter, you know, you don't have to do five kilometer runs. You can just go for a walk around the block, but getting out, doing something for yourself, not only helps your mental health, it also in improves your health in general. And I feel like that lays the perfect foundation for an awesome PhD kind of experience and routine. Um, healthy breakfast. So I've been trialing recently, only eating fruit until midday. And even though it's, I've not been able to find any science on whether or not this is beneficial, I do feel better. Now I'm gonna carry on doing it to make sure it's not weird placebo thing, but uh, a few uh, books that I read by successful entrepreneurs and other businessmen, they were like, okay, only eat, I only eat fruit until midday. And I was like, I'll give it a go. I'm all up for self-experimentation. So yes, having a healthy breakfast. And if you're not sure what that looks like, I think having only fruit in the morning is kind of a good start to that. I do like it. I feel 
uh, more energetic, but we'll see how that goes. So having a healthy breakfast, making sure that it's well-rounded, and uh, I tend to steer clear from dairy in the mornings. Um, but yes, you know, whatever works for you, whatever makes you feel alert, alive, and like well-fueled for the day. I think that's the important thing. Another thing that's really important, and uh, I've been doing more and more uh, with sort of regularity, is meditation, mindfulness app. So get yourself Insight Timer, the app. Get yourself, if you can afford it, um, Headspace. I think that's awesome. There's also Calm, but there's a load of apps out there that are based in science um, that means that the meditations you're gonna do are just gonna set you in the right sort of frame of mind for the day, anticipating what the day is gonna be like, um, you know, can induce a lot of anxiety, but just taking 10 minutes, that's all it takes every morning. You can do it on the bus, you can do it on the train, uh, you can do it in your room, wherever, but just taking a little bit of time to uh, just calm your mind really helps. And I feel like that is how the perfect PhD day would start. And uh, we haven't even done any work yet, but you're already laying the foundations for an awesome, productive, and uh, health-focused day. Yes. When you get in, okay, let's say you've gotten into the lab or the office, what's the number one thing you should do? I think it is the worst thing. Now, there is a book called Eat That Frog, I think by Brian Tracy, and uh, I've been a huge fan of implementing essentially that concept every single day. So. Do not do this, right? What, what do you normally do? You go in, you open emails, you go, oh, I'll go get a coffee, I'll go speak to someone. You know, you feel like you owe it to yourself to like ramp up the day. But I found that just by getting in, staying focused and tackling that number one thing that you definitely have to do. Look at that list. Look at the list that you've created um, about, you know, like all of the things you need to do. And if there's one that makes you feel gross and anxious, do that. And the reason, like there's so many good reasons for doing it. The main one I like it is because first of all, it ticks off that big thing. And also it removes a lot of anxiety and stress away from me. Um, and if it's a big task, then I make sure that I spend at least an hour on that one thing, working tiny bit by tiny bit towards that big goal that I, you know, stresses me out. So that's it. Um, eat the frog, really. It's it's the number one thing. Do not get sucked into emails or social media. Um, I don't check emails until the afternoon, and I think it's fantastic. You know, like I know that some research groups run via the email, but if you can. Do not do that first thing. Spend one hour at least doing the, the number one horrible thing that you have to do. It may be writing that paper, it may be doing some lab work, it may be reading 10 uh, articles, whatever it is, just um, do it. When you get in, first thing, and then uh, you'll be amazed how much uh, kind of lighter you feel after that. Um, and yeah, that is the most important thing. Now, mornings are so, so, so important. Um, and so after you've done that number one important thing for an hour, I like to get like an hour and a half of good, solid, what, what Cal Newport calls deep work in. So that is something that will progress you towards your goal of getting a PhD. At the time, it may be, I need to spend an hour and a half in the lab doing this research. I need to spend an hour and a half writing. I need to spend an hour and a half planning my experiments. You know, the hour and a half block, it will change what is in it based on where you are during your PhD, how far through um, a certain experimental kind of process you are. Um, but essentially that one hour and a half of deep work, stick some headphones in, get, uh, uh, what's the thing, my noise. Um, is another app that I use to just blast sort of like white, brown, green noise, all sorts of noises into my head to, dis to distract me and uh, sort of like provide me with the ability to focus in an open office environment. So one hour and a half focused block work, right? So at the moment, we, in the morning, we've done about two and a half hours, um, but it's it's about that morning, like using that energy you've got, and then in the afternoon, you know, you can uh, do those um, do those other tasks. But I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Um, after you've done that hour and a half, or between an hour and an hour and a half, it's fine, of deep work, and you know, it's like a muscle. You, I, I do an hour and a half now, but I started with an hour, um, maybe only 40 minutes, actually, 40 minutes of hard work, and I sort of slowly exercised that muscle and that capacity until it got up to an hour and a half, but you may 
may feel like you only need to do 45 minutes of deep work and that's absolutely fine. But whatever you do after that, then you can check emails, right? You can check emails, you can do all that busy work, get on social media, follow up people, like just do that little bit of admin work before you go to lunch. So already the day has been filled with valuable work. You've got rid of the biggest tasks on your to-do list that you don't want to do. Um, and also you've worked a little bit towards your bigger goal. And uh, I think that morning is just gonna set you up for success later on. Um, and it's so important that, yeah, the mornings are the most productive time, at least for me. And I feel like a lot of people don't use the mornings well enough. Then have some lunch, uh, delicious, delicious lunch. Uh, you know, take about, I, I, I liked an hour lunch. I love sitting down for an hour, eating, chatting, socializing, try not to think about what I need to do in the afternoon or what I've done in the morning. Like a lot of people, the culture in some of the labs was to eat at their desks. And as soon as I went in, I was like, no. So I tried to sort of foster a culture where people come together to eat, or I would go see people and say, oh, do you wanna go grab some lunch? Or, oh, you know, that sort of thing. I think that's the time, it's like a little circuit breaker to, um, to refresh your mind and get the ideas going. And you know, start that collaboration. You know, your colleagues are there to uh, potentially collaborate with in the future. So uh, get that conversation started, get it going, talk about common interests. And lunch is a uh, underrepresented uh, or undervalued, I guess, uh, moment of the day. So make sure that you use it to your full extent. Uh, and just relax, enjoy yourself, have a conversation about something that isn't work, that's so important. Now, the afternoon. Okay, in the afternoon, you've done a load of work in the morning, what you want is another hour to an hour and a half of focused work. So once again, look at where you are. Do you need to, um, do you need to do some lab work? Do you need to write something? Do you need to produce a poster presentation? Do you need to work on your conference presentation? Do you need to apply for stuff? Do you need to go and clean up the lab? Like one and a half hours of focused work that will help you get to your end goal. Now these days, like you'll notice I've got like in the morning, do eat the frog. So let's talk about eat the frog, about an hour and a half, lunch and another hour and a half. So that's only about three hours worth of hard work during the day. Um, and that's all you need, but execute it consistently. Now, one thing I'll say about the tax, tasks that you put in the blocks of time for your deep work time, um, you need to come up with a day and a task that will get you closer to your goal. So at the moment, it may be that you don't have any results. So get those results. But once you've got those results, then you can write it up. But don't sort of like jump around too much between different tasks because you'll just feel scattered. So humans do not like monotony, but it is the one thing that will get you to your end goal. Show up, write, show up, do experiments, but do it in like, you know, hardcore blocks where you're just doing one type of thing for a long period of time. Um, and that's how you kind of build uh, the, the, the foundations for, you know, your thesis and just executing. And, and the more you exercise your willpower, the, uh, the better the results will be and the easier it will be for you to have that focused time because you'll see progress and you'll kind of want to work towards your goal more and more. Then the last thing in the afternoon after you've had that extra hour and a half is to do all of the shitty jobs. <laughs> do like respond to emails, um, do admin stuff, fill out the paperwork, do the OHS forms, uh, or you know, just do all of the stuff that's built up, but all of the stuff that's just like admin, like life admin, uni admin, all of that, you know, meet up with students, go speak to your supervisor, all of those little things um, that just build up during the day that they matter, but they're not gonna get you any closer to your end goals necessarily. Um, and so that's how I think I would fit in all of those rubbish tasks, you know, ordering supplies for the lab was a big one for me, but I would do that at the end of the day once I committed to the um, eating the frog and the three hours of focused work. And I think that is how uh, a PhD day should be structured. So it's like 
the most efficient, productive, but also not too overwhelming, I hope. Now, here are some tips that I think are important to note about PhD daily schedules and habits. The first one is don't wait for inspiration or motivation to suddenly like spark you into action. It doesn't work like that. Um, you need to create habits and habits uh, are based on cues. So what happens when you first sit down at your computer a lot of us, the habit is that we go on emails, we go on social media. No, break that habit. Um, the way you break that habit is you notice the cue and then you purposely, uh, I guess, force yourself to not open the emails. You work for, on that eating that frog first thing in the morning um, and then afterwards your reward is maybe I can go on social media for a bit or maybe I'll go grab my, get myself a cup of tea. Whatever it is, um, you need to break that, that cue and habit and reward cycle. Um, and uh, yeah, it's I don't ever feel like sitting down and uh, writing a blog article. I don't feel ever feel like sitting down uh, necessarily and recording a video, but it's a habit I've got into every single day. When I sit down first thing in the morning, I create a video or I create a bit of content. Um, and it's not inspiring, it's not motivating, I don't feel like I have to do it, but it's something I do know and it's so very important. So yes, don't wait for uh, motivation or to be inspired to work. Create the habits, execute to the best you can at that time and just go for it. And another important thing to note is that sometimes things can feel overwhelming. Now when things feel overwhelming, Remember that all you have to do is make a 1% sort of increase in your, uh, in your sort of ability to get to the end goal. So even if you're like, you know what, I don't feel like writing, I've got an hour and a half, I've got my bloody like white noise going on in my, my ears, um, but I just don't feel like it. That's fine, not, you know, but you do have to just do some work. Say, I'm gonna spend five minutes writing on this thing. That's all you have to do. And it's strange because once you get started, the habit kicks in. I know a few times I've been like, oh, I don't really wanna write, but I'm like, you know what? I'll spend five minutes just getting the headlines sorted or uh, structuring out my blog or, uh, or writing down an outline for a video. And then as soon as that habit starts, it starts sort of like, you know, snowballing into me actually doing the thing. So it can feel overwhelming, um, but breaking the task down to something that can be completed in about two minutes is gonna be the way for you to overcome that sense of feeling overwhelmed. And it can be as simple as turn on my computer and open a Word document. Like that could be the habit uh, that you get yourself into if you're feeling overwhelmed. And uh, yeah, you know, remember that this is a marathon and not a sprint. So doing a little bit every day is what you're aiming for. Some days are gonna be better than others, no doubt, but having the self-discipline and the, um, the right habits sort of embedded in you will help you get to that end goal, which is a PhD. So yes, there is my PhD daily schedule for success and the habits that I think you should sort of try to implement for maximum results. So there we have it, there's my perfect PhD schedule and uh, habits. Let me know in the comments what you think. Also, remember to sign up to the newsletter where I have tons of exclusive content that's not gonna be published anywhere else um, and lots of invites as well to uh, invite only Q and A's, uh, what I'm reading, what I'm listening to, what I'm thinking about, all of the productivity tips, all of the self experiments that I'm doing uh, and the results. Uh, so yes, go check out the newsletter at andrewstapleton.com.au slash newsletter and I'll put the uh, link in the description below. So go check that out. All right then, my beautiful friend, until next time, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.